Stephanie and Rick from Back to the Passport. So we just got home from our second EF Go Ahead Tours trip, this time traveling to England, Scotland, and Ireland, as our first trip with them was to Spain, France, and Italy back in 2018. I've also traveled with EF Ultimate Break with some girlfriends in 2016 and way back when in like 2008. So I knew that Go Ahead was gonna be legit and a good option for us. But just like any form of travel, group tours are not for everyone, but they can also be great options for travelers. One reason I like booking through group tours is when we're doing multi-country tours and I am really not in the mood to figure out trains, planes, and automobiles on our own. Most of the trips we've done with our group tours, especially Go Ahead, have been to several countries as it just makes it so much easier to just hop on a bus and be taken to a new destination. What do you like about the doing the group tour kind of thing? Yeah, I like that. I like uh, just being able to see so many different places, uh, like you places that you wouldn't normally see, like mm-hmm. small towns or you know, like off the beaten path type things. Uh, and yeah, also that everything's just handled by the tour company, by the tour director. You don't have to worry about all the little things. Um, like booking tickets for mm-hmm. places is nice too because you can get you know the group. Or your tour director will get you in as the group. You can go in like the side door, or, like the secret entrance or things like That's that. Good. You know, you can like jump the line. Uh, so yeah, just a few things that I like. Yeah. And especially today with like so many tour companies or sightseeing attractions moving to those timed entry tickets. I understand it. I think it's kind of a pain in the ass. And so yeah, letting go ahead be mm-hmm. like, okay, we've got you. We'll get you into Edinburgh Castle at this specific time. We don't have to worry about it. So that was a really good point. Yeah. Uh, I will say we are also planning a group tour to Japan in 2024, as it's going to be both of our first times visiting Asia, and I would really prefer to have a guide helping us figure it out, just because, again, it's very foreign to us. I think after having done a few tours now, and especially just having to have traveled on our own, a lot of Europe, I feel like we probably won't be looking at group tours anymore, Mm -hmm. except for the food and wine tour I have got our eye on. (laughs) Sure. Yeah, that's another uh, another point about. So, like, we've done tours of Europe now, mm-hmm. and we've got a taste of a few different countries. So it's like I'm now I'm more comfortable going to places on our own. Yeah. Uh, which is another reason I like these tours. So. Yep. All right. Before we get into our uh, top ten tips, I do want to go over some of the benefits of booking a group tour. So like we've kind of already talked about, the organized transport is a huge benefit. Like I said, there are just some destinations that I would rather just let somebody else figure out how to get us from point A to point B, and I can just enjoy the ride. Like Rick said, we also do visit like off the beaten path places. Like on our recent trip, we stopped in like Kendall and a bunch of places in Wales that I cannot pronounce. All these places in (laughs) Scotland, Ireland that I've never heard of. Yep. And like, granted, we were just there for like an hour to like get a snack or a drink or a bathroom break, but it's still really neat just seeing those places that, yeah, I'm not going to be carving out time on any other itinerary to go visit these places. I also really like the mix of free time and organized activities. I like that these tours know why people are visiting the certain cities and make sure to include stops at the important sightseeing opportunities or attractions while also giving us free time to explore on our own. Like, our recent tour included Edinburgh Castle, Blarney Castle, the Cliffs of Moher, and so on, but they also gave us time to do our own thing. I really like the inclusion of the major sites, as, again, I don't have to worry about buying tickets or getting the timing just right, as, again, so many, so many attractions are moving to that timed entry system. And lastly, you get that tour director. It's always nice having a tour director who organizes everything and takes charge of the day's plans. Plus, the directors know what to recommend and what to recommend we skip so we're not wasting our precious time at each stop along the tour. Do we have to give a huge shout out to Valentina for being an amazing tour director for our trip to Spain, France, and Italy, as well as a shout out to Colin for expertly guiding us through the United Kingdom and Ireland. So we put together this video to share our top 10 tips for traveling with Go Ahead, as well as to give travelers an idea of what to expect if this is gonna be your first time going on a Go Ahead tour. So coming in at number 10, pick your tour by the itinerary. 
Like I said, I like these tours because many of them are multi-country or multi-city, which makes it super easy, barely an inconvenience, to visit a few destinations in one trip. Now, that does mean the pace of these types of tours is going to be very fast. Even our recent two-week trip to England, Scotland, and Ireland went by way faster than I expected it to, even though we were gone for two whole weeks. <laughs> exactly two weeks. We were able to pack a lot in those two weeks, though, even outside of the itinerary itself. But my main recommendation is to book a group tour that visits several destinations so you get a taste of a place, and then you can decide if you want to go back again in the future. Obviously, only if you like being on the move. They do offer tours that stay in one place, which can be a great option if you're uncomfortable with travel or figuring out where to stay. But I think the big benefit, again, of these guided group tours is packing in as much as possible while they figure out how to get us there and where to stay. But that does mean you are going, going, going like the Energizer Bunny. On our recent trip, we would have like at most two nights in one city. Like we had two nights in London, two nights in Edinburgh, one night in Chester, two nights in Dublin, and so on. So don't plan on getting too cozy or unpacking too much in each hotel. Be true to yourself and your desire to be on the go and pick an itinerary that matches your travel style. Also good to know that the first and last day of a trip are always travel days. So for the most part, the first day is an overnight flight if you want to factor that in for any PTO requests or time off that you need from work. You still may be able to work that first day of the tour because you probably won't be leaving until later in the day or even later in the night. We make sure that we try to time our trips with holidays, like our one back in 2018, we timed with 4th of July, and our recent trip we timed with Labor Day, so we had to take less time off work, and luckily our trip was also timed well with weekends. So we flew out on Friday, September 1st to Paris, as we wanted to add that stop to our trip on our own dime, as we already had Labor Day off, and that was when we were scheduled to fly out to London. So we might as well make the most of our time off and have gotten there early. And then our tour ended with our flights back home on Friday, September 15th. So in case anything happened, we'd have that entire weekend to figure it out. Lastly, I'll also recommend taking a look at the excursions available on the tour. On our first go-ahead tour, what we did every excursion possible. I think so, yeah. Because, I mean, we were going to Italian wineries, a flamenco show in Barcelona, a charming village in Provence. This time, we only did one, and they had, what, at least three on that tour? Mm hmm Yeah. But we only opted to do the traditional Irish dinner show. <laughs> Also, do take note that a lot of the excursions are timed against your free time in the city, so it's up to you whether you'd rather explore on your own or do an excursion. But speaking of free time... Number nine, plan your free time. Uh, like we are saying, the you have free time built in uh, to the trips, but also you can make as much free time as you want. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go on all the group activities like... Most places there's a, a bus tour like in the morning, like say in mm -hmm. Dublin, we drove around for you know three or four hours. You don't have to do those. Mm -hmm. I mean, you paid to do it, so you know you you're, you're missing out if you don't. But you know, it's completely up to you whether you do those things or not. Mm -hmm. And also, the free time that you do have that's planned, uh, we usually just I don't know go to a wine bar or some. You know, walk around the city, walk explore around, the city, yeah, wander, uh, wander around a lot. Uh, but you know, because we have most of the major stops checked off already yeah. as part of the trip. So in our free time, we don't necessarily have to, you know, go see these sites and attractions. Like we can just go relax, relax, and, yep. and chill out. So, and also on our last trip, the tour director had some optional excursions mm -hmm. that weren't part of the original go ahead 
itinerary. No. So we didn't even know about him until we got there and got our itinerary from Colin, our tour director. And we did a few extra things like a walking tour of Edinburgh, Mm -hmm. uh, the Guinness, right? The Guinness Mm -hmm. storehouse. Yeah. So that's an example of something that we wanted to do anyway with our own free time in Dublin was go to the Guinness storehouse. Uh, But our tour director took care of it, took care of that for us. So that was great. And that was yeah, obviously another good reason for going on these tours with your director is they can just get you into these places. Yeah. Yeah, no questions asked. Yep. All right. Coming in at number eight, we've got pricing out your flights. So this one can be kind of tricky as really the reason we do book flights with Go Ahead is in case anything happens on our tour. They are responsible for figuring out how to get us home or there, whichever way flights end up not working out. If we book on our own, obviously it's up to us to get it sorted. They are not responsible for helping us figure out flights. And with so many issues with airlines these days, I'm kind of willing to suck it up and pay go ahead to manage that for us, especially after this summer when we got stranded in New Jersey and drove the entire length of Pennsylvania just to get the F away from the East Coast and get on home. So at least this way, booking flights with GoAhead, that would be their responsibility. They would help us out. They would make sure that we got home. And especially also since we buy travel insurance, I just like having that peace of mind of knowing that I don't have to worry about anything besides checking into our flights and having our passport. I do understand that, yes, they are a business. They have to make money. But I do think some of the flights we got booked on are maybe not quite worth what we paid for like especially our recent flight coming home we went from dublin to zurich and then all the way back over to denver i mean it was probably cheap which is why we were on it Mm -hmm. so really decide which is more important to you the price of your flight or the peace of mind knowing that you don't have to deal with it if something goes wrong or your flight is canceled we were also able to make changes to our flights through go ahead so our tour technically started in london So we were supposed to fly Denver to London, but since we were so close to France and we had the time, I really wanted to sneak a trip into Paris. So I emailed their customer support line. They said, not a problem to reroute us to Paris instead. We just obviously had to pay for the difference in the airfare. And I do think there is a cutoff to when you can make changes to flights. So be sure to look that up. It's either something like 60 or 90 days. So if you do want to be rerouted and start your tour early or stay behind, they're willing to help you out with that. Yeah, and I'll say, I think that's a, a lesser known trick, if you want to call it a hack. You know, yeah. Most people don't know that you can, you know, reroute your flights like this to, to do something more yep. before or after. So it's good yeah. to keep in mind. Especially if you've already paid for it. They don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, again, they're not going to cover your hotel if you're going right. ahead or staying behind. But mm-hmm. otherwise, I thought it was pretty easy. I will say we will be making a specific request when we do go to Japan next year, as I know... I know for a fact there are direct flights from Denver to Tokyo. And if they try putting us on a flight with a stop, I'm going to be giving them a call. (laughs) All right, moving on to number seven. Uh, So number seven is prepare for transportation. There are a lot of modes of transportation. You mentioned trains, planes, and automobiles. Uh, We'll add boats to that as well. Uh, We went, so we were on a coach. Most of the time, just driving between the cities and mm-hmm. these countries. But then when we went uh, from Scotland to Ireland, we were on a ferry. Uh, we did take the train from London to Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. And the the coach rides, the bus rides, um, like I said, are more frequent. So you should really prepare for, for a lot of time on the road sometimes. I mean, you know, there was one day, I don't know, we... We were on the road for at least six to eight hours total. I mean, there were stops. Yeah, there were stops along the way. And that's the other thing is they do stop a lot. Um, More than I would have imagined. I mean, you want to be hydrated. Well, right. And there's, you know, I think every hour to hour and a half, they'll be stopping for bathroom breaks. It's a little much. Yeah, it, it can be a little much sometimes. But bring things to do. You know, read a book, watch a movie take a nap and it's also good to note that your bags will be below the bus so when you mm-hmm. get on the bus uh the bags go underneath what we call the basement or what they call yeah. the basement uh so just make sure you have everything you need for that day on the bus mm-hmm. with you you know because it's not the end of the world if 
the driver has to get your bag out from underneath, but if it's stuffed all the way in the back behind a bunch of other stuff, it's kind of inconvenient. Yep. Uh, so just make sure you have what you need. Like, for example, I left my sunglasses underneath uh, when oh, we went yeah. to Cliff some more. I just thought, oh, Cliff some more isn't going to be sunny. It's going to be rainy and clever now. So it was perfectly oh. sunny, and I didn't have my sunglasses, <laughs> but it survived. So. You survived. You're just a little squinty in some photos. <laughs> right. Uh, and another thing about the specifically the, the buses, uh, they go on some very narrow windy roads throughout the countrysides of these countries and don't freak out they know what they're doing oh god uh, exactly every time doing. every time we do this there's always uh, the <gasps> the gasping of all the other uh, people in your group when yeah you're going around like a sharp curve or like another car coming but yep. trust trust your drivers they know what they're doing yep no i think that's a great point about having everything on you Again, Colin, our tour director, was great. Like, when we were going from Scotland to Ireland, he made sure to make a note, like, have your passport on your person. Like, try not to stuff it in your bag because there is going to be customs and immigration. So make sure that is ready. But otherwise, yeah, most of your stuff is going to be under the bus and inaccessible. All right, coming in at number six is just a little heads up about the hotels. So I did notice on our recent trip that it kind of felt like we were staying in more chain hotels than our last tour. I don't know if you felt mm-hmm. that way at yeah, all. Yeah, I felt that too. Yeah. But honestly, it wasn't a big deal as all the hotels were very centrally located and very walkable to all the things we wanted to do and very safe. Like even that night in Killarney after we went out to like some pubs, it was probably what a 10, 15 minute walk maybe back to the hotel. Mm-hmm. Felt very safe, not a problem, very walkable. We knew exactly where we were going super easy. I guess the only hotel I think that maybe wasn't the most centrally located was our hotel in London because technically we were in like the Kensington neighborhood. Mm -hmm. There was a tube station like a three minute walk away so it was super easy but I also feel like some people on our trip probably weren't as metro savvy as we are and buying Mm -hmm. oyster cards and figuring out the tube but if you're willing to do that again most hotels were in very walkable locations but just be prepared to maybe figure some things out. And they do let you know the hotels ahead of time, like on the website, in the app. So you can look them up. You can figure out what's nearby. If you want to pre-plan, like where you're going to go for dinner one night, when you have a free night, you can do that ahead of time. I also say we will get to packing later, but do be prepared that some of these hotels will only have one elevator and that the first floor is a level up from reception. So if your room is on floor one, you're not on the same floor. You still have to go upstairs. (laughs) And some of these elevators fit two people yep. max with your luggage. They're they're tiny. They're oh my bad. god! Could you imagine if we had done this tour at the hotel we stayed at in Paris? How long it would take people to get up to their room? It's taking hours. <laughs> yeah. I will also say when we got to our hotel in Dublin, we uh, heard some grumbling from other travelers because the hotel didn't have air conditioning, which again is a common thing among European hotels. It was raining and chilly. What do you need AC for? I do think that that has been a contributing factor to staying at more chain places like Holiday Inns as they're more accustomed to having American guests, as I'm sure some travelers on previous go-ahead trips have complained about Europeans not putting a priority on AC. (laughs) Like I said, just be prepared for a typical European hotel and you will be good. And again, you will also get that list of hotels so you can research them, look up photos, look up reviews, know exactly what you're getting into before you get there. All of the hotels that we stayed at offered breakfast, like some were buffets, some were a mix of buffet and a limited menu of eggs and pancakes. Rick and I don't normally eat breakfast when we're at home, so there were some mornings that we did skip this meal just because we didn't need it. But again, you are spending a lot of time on the bus, so maybe you do want to plan to eat breakfast, just knowing that you might not be getting lunch until later in the day. But all the breakfasts were pretty great at the places we did stay. Mm -hmm. Um, You'll typically find, you know, eggs, bacon, sausage, baked beans, breads and croissants, fresh fruit, yogurt, oatmeal, and then a variety of juices and water. I will say, I think there was only one hotel. I think it was our hotel in Chester that had American drip coffee. And that Mm. blew everyone's mind. Otherwise, it's going to be those specialty coffee machines with like the cappuccinos, the lattes, the cafe au lait, which was fine by us because I will gladly take a cappuccino any morning over the standard drip coffee, but just something to keep in mind. 
Also, most places started serving breakfast around 6.30 or 7, which was pretty good as most mornings we had to be on the bus by like 8.15 or 8.30. Yeah, so we'll move on to number five, which is packing. So pack light. Pack as light as possible. So this last trip, we uh, each had a carry-on and a personal item. So Mm -hmm. we didn't have to check anything and lug around large pieces of luggage. Uh, it's so much easier to get around with the smaller bags, and like we, like you said, with the hotels, they can be the elevators can be smaller, mm-hmm. and they're just you know a little more cramped in general. So maneuvering with a smaller suitcase is easier, uh, mm-hmm. and it also allows us to take the stairs. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so while everyone else is congregating around the elevators, we just buzz right up the stairs and go to our room with our carry-ons. Yep. So. The other thing is you will have to manage your own luggage mm-hmm. once it's off the bus. Yeah. So between stops, the driver will load your stuff underneath. Uh, but other than that, you'll be responsible for moving it into the hotel and around the hotel. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Pack as light as possible. I mean, I think that's good advice for mm-hmm. any trip we go on. Sure. Yeah, because last time we did a uh, we we had a carry on one carry or sorry one check bag mm-hmm. between the two of us on our trip five years ago, and that wasn't as bad because it was only one large bag between mm-hmm. the two of us. But we there were people on this trip, pretty much everyone else, one giant check bag per person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and first of all, I'm like, what do you need all that crap for? I mean, unless and, you're taking home wine, yeah. I can understand that then. <laughs> but it's up oh. to you. It just depends on how yeah how much you want to. Lug around that luggage. True. Although thinking about it, Ireland and Scotland and England are not known for their amazing wines. So I don't know what these people were taking home. Right. (laughs) All right. Moving on to number four, embrace the experience. My mom has said that she does not want to do this type of travel as she is not in control of anything. And that's fair. She likes researching hotels and planning out the day-to-day activities. You and I are a bit more go with the flow types i would say and these types of tours work well for us we get to see the major sites and have free time on our own and a hotel is a hotel as long as i have somewhere to sleep i don't care if you go on one of these tours just try to embrace the experience and enjoy it for what it is make friends along the way as it feels almost impossible not to like you have to be purposely closed off and antisocial not to make a friend on this trip Mm -hmm. Because I feel like everyone on our tour got along and you kind of make your little cliques. Well, everyone's so friendly and you're going to be with the same group for a week and a half, two weeks. So you might as well get to to know people. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Also, I would say have the right expectations for this type of travel. You're not staying in five-star hotels. You are not flying first class unless you offer to pay for that upgrade. And the included meals are not from Michelin-starred restaurants. We did hear some complaints on our tour of the included meals. Like on some nights, especially typically the first night in a new city, there is an included group dinner. Expect a set menu, typically a starter, a main, a dessert, and a complimentary glass of wine or beer. Honestly, I would compare it to conference catering. I enjoyed our meals that we had. I really enjoyed our meal in London, which was a steak pie and then like that brownie with that caramel ice cream. Mm. And then our meal in Dublin. I think I got like the fish and then that caramel cake, like our last night, our farewell dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh, that yeah, cake was so good. I mean, again, some of the menus are going to feature traditional or regional typical dishes. Some nights it's the choice between pasta and a burger and it's okay. Just again, embrace it, go with the flow. Or again, like Rick said earlier, you can opt out of certain things. If the menu has been passed around that night and you don't see anything you want, you don't have to go to the included dinner. You can go off and find your own place. It's totally okay. Just keep your tour director in the loop of where you are so they're not trying to count you and then wondering where the hell you went. Yeah, I'll add uh, to the food. You had put in your allergy mm-hmm. uh, into Go Ahead system, before, like when we booked, yep. you know, uh, and uh, eggplant. Yep. Uh, so everywhere we went for the included group dinners, they came up and, and asked you and let make sure that there was nothing in yep. the food that would uh, trigger your allergy. So that was yep. nice that they... that level of effort to make sure that yeah you didn't get something bad yeah or yeah colin would like scream across the room being like there's no eggplant in it i'm like okay yeah i think yeah most of that is probably on it's on colin and yeah yeah, so he was he was the one that was very good about letting the restaurants know ahead of time and then the wait staff would also check so yeah props to colin for that 
Yeah. All right. Lastly, on embracing the experience, <laughs> we've learned that we are not the typical demographic that book group tours. We could have made a bingo card of all the other things the travelers were going to say to us, all with good intentions, but we probably were the youngest travelers in our group. So we got all the comments of, are you recently married? This is oh, your honeymoon? Yeah, of course oh. you can take the stairs with those young knees of yours. Wait until you're our age. Good thing you're traveling before you have kids. Like someone asked about my age and I jokingly replied that I was 47 and you could hear a pin drop with the collective silence after I said that. I told them I was not 47 and then there was the collective sigh of relief. But we definitely are outside of the typical demographic. So just go into that. If you are you know, closer to our age in your mid thirties, you might be the youngest people on the group. Uh, because the demographic that books these type of trips is often older, but we also, we don't care. We enjoy hanging out with all the people that are still choosing to travel. Cause like Rick said, most people on these trips are happy to be there. They're active. They're fully engaged with the experience. So at that point, the age doesn't really matter. But that, if that is something that matters to you, just be sure to take that into consideration. All right, so number three is around money matters and tipping. So you look ahead, see what countries you're going to be going to, what their local currency is. Uh, get that ahead of time. It's much easier if you do it at your uh, local bank. Yep. You can go to ATMs in these countries and get money out that way, but... You know, you're at the whim of where's the nearest ATM, and mm -hmm. it's easier just to have it with you mm -hmm. going into it. Uh, and so we, on this last trip, we had pound. We were then countries had pounds and euros, so we had to be aware of of that. You mm -hmm. know where we were, what money they accepted. Um, so the other thing with money is the tipping. So d typically in European countries, you don't tip at like restaurants. I mean, like, like, like you do best. in America, it's not the, so you tip less, mm -hmm. uh, but for your tour director, your local guides, your drivers, like anyone that, you know, helps you get around on your trip, you should definitely slip them a little money at the end. Yep. Um, and so we tipped our tour director, our drivers, and each of the local guides in each of the cities. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to say, you know... They take care of you, take care of them. Mm -hmm. Like they said earlier with the bus drivers, like they maneuver through some crazy, well, not just the, like the country roads, like the small city streets and everything. Yep. And that job's not easy. No, so, I would never want it. Yeah. So I'm, and the amount of work that goes in for the tour director to get all this together, I, yeah, I'm okay throwing them some cash because they, they put a lot into this. Definitely. And Go Ahead does provide guidelines for tipping as well. Mm -hmm. I think they say it's about, I'm just going to use dollars to make it easy, two to four dollars per day for your driver. And like, yeah, when we got to Ireland, we had the same driver for the next seven days. And he was busting his butt, getting everyone's giant suitcases under the bus. Like Rick said, maneuvering us through these teeny tiny little towns, just taking care of us. And then your tour director, it's typically about eight to ten dollars per day. And then I think the local guides, what it's two to four per person or something. something. Maybe well, maybe, maybe four to yeah. six per person. Mm -hmm. You will get a welcome kit before you leave that explains everything you need to know. Also has a little envelope, so in case you want to be discreet with your tip, you can do so. All right, coming in at number two, we've got customer service. So I've contacted Go Ahead's customer service in a variety of ways, email, online forms, and by calling. All the customer service reps I've communicated with were friendly and prompt in getting me answers. So when in doubt, just reach out. Like I've asked them about the timing of certain activities so I can better plan our free time we have, contact them about flights, and so on. Just do keep in mind that their main office is on the East Coast. So like for us, I have to remember that they are two hours ahead if we ever want to call them about anything. Also kind of in line with their customer service, Go Ahead does offer travel insurance. Rick and I always buy it just in case we have to cancel our trip or move it or what have you. I just like having that peace of mind that our investment is protected, especially after having gone through the pandemic and you just, you never know what's gonna happen. I'd rather just make sure that we're insured. All right. 
Number one, trust your tour director. Uh, so the tour director we've mentioned a few times, they are kind of like your rock through this whole experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, they actually do, are, are responsible for, what do you say, um, getting all the the places that we go. Oh, yeah. Um, like he... He is in charge of like where we actually go and where like day the places that we stop day to day. Um, so like the bigger picture things is what Go Ahead handles, but mm-hmm. the the smaller like day to day things, the tour director actually handles those and schedules those themselves. Yep. Uh, so you can always go to them with any questions that you have. You know, no matter how small or dumb it may seem, like ask your director questions. They're very willing to help you out. Very friendly. Very. I mean, they have to be... To know, continue to, to do this. Yeah, people, 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 persons <laughs> to, to do this this type of job. Uh, and the communication, uh, they're very good about communicating where to be at what time. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, so the last one we did five years ago, they always had a sheet at the front desk, mm-hmm. like a sheet of paper that's like, this is what we're doing, what time. I think they probably still did that this time, but we didn't. We never saw we it. We <laughs> didn't use it because we used the app. So there's a Go Ahead app uh, where you have chat with everyone else in your group as well as your tour director. So they post updates there, and yeah, you can message there at any time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also used WhatsApp, but Tried. that didn't really go go as well. <laughs> so for some reason, we we were able to use it for the first like three or four days, yeah. maybe, but then. Somehow we violated the terms of service on WhatsApp and yeah, got completely cut like off. cut off from the system. Could not recreate account. And we weren't anything. the only ones. It's not like we were doing weird stuff on our yeah. WhatsApp accounts. It but. had to have been something with being overseas. I I don't know. That's my guess. But uh, we still had the EF app yep. for communication. And yeah. Yep. Anything else to add to that? Yeah. No, I think just trusting your tour director... Most of them are either local to a place that the tour stops at or have been there many, many times. They know what to recommend. I think Colin even made a comment of like, he'll give you a few restaurant recommendations because he's said that like, he's told people to die in a certain place and then they come back and they're like, I hated it. And he's like, well, <laughs> so obviously take everything that your tour director says with like a grain of salt. Make sure that you look up anything if you are particular or if you have more picky tastes. But otherwise, your tour director really is there just to make sure that you're on time, the itinerary goes off without a hitch, and that you have a good time. Both of our tour directors have been fantastic. All the ones I've had previously with EF companies were also great. They're just, they're good people, and they all get rated at the end. So you know that these guys have been vetted. They've done this multiple times. They're not going to lead you astray. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps up our top 10 tips for booking a trip with Go Ahead Tours. If you have any questions about our experiences with them, please feel free to leave us a comment or check out our blog at backtothepassport.com for more in-depth reviews of our experiences as well as other travel-related content. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.